Uh, it's uh, day 197. I'm still recovering from a cold and uh, the weather's clamped down again. But I did manage to get out to uh, neighbors down the road. Iconic Canadian writer, Susan Musgrave, poet, novelist, author of almost 30 books, including some that have been shortlisted for the Governor General's Award. Uh, I've recently been savoring stories from her collection, uh, You're in Canada Now, Motherfucker. An eclectic uh, group of stories uh, shot through with um, sex, drugs, food, and uh, also some of her observations from living here on Haida Gwaii in a home uh, that she and her, well, now incarcerated husband, author and prolific bank robber Stephen Reed had lived in. And uh, so here are some clips from our conversation. The project I'm working on right now is kind of a cookbook called the Flavors of Haida Gwaii. It's, the, it's more about the people, the land, and the food, but the food, of course, is, is really important here because we live in a place where all our food is brought in mostly. So food gathering is a huge part of our lives and something I'm really interested in. It's so much more rewarding to go out and spend a day in the bush, you know, getting wet or getting bitten by bugs and, you know, collecting maybe a cup full of cranberries or, or a bag full of chanterelles than, than going to a grocery store and paying a certain amount of money and, and bringing those things home. You don't feel empty when you, when you gather food. You feel there's so much more that goes on at the same time. You're looking at all the mosses and the little plants and it's strangely eerily silent in the bush. So you're really in touch with the land in ways that um, are, it's just very, very satisfying. I used to hunt in the 70s and, and I was very good at butchering and cooking and I loved being out there again in the slash, just watching and waiting for a deer, something very primitive and, and again really fulfilling about doing that. But then I would cook this roast and I would take a bite and I'd see these big brown eyes looking at me and <laughs> I became a vegetarian and uh, I, never, I didn't stop doing the process, going hunting. I just couldn't eat the meat, I ate nut bristles and you know, awful stuff instead. And I like the way living on Haida Gwaii makes you think about your relationship to the animals all around you. Are they food or what are they? I don't see them just as food. I see them as part of something much bigger. It's not that I have a moral thing about eating meat, but I, it's the life force is what I have to reckon with. And that's something you, you're, you face on Haida Gwaii all the time. You're, you're close to, to life and death here. You have to be aware here. You have to live in an aware way watch out for that tree that's going to fall, or the bear that might come out of the huckleberry patch. Speaking of which, there's fabulous cranberries yesterday. Great loads. This took me about three hours to pick. <laughs> this is a tiny little amount, but again, what I learned here is uh, how much work and effort is involved in food gathering, and, and, and ultimately how satisfying that is, so that when I go back to the city and just buy frozen cranberries, I, I, that emptiness comes back, that feeling that I'm not producing my life. I'm I'm consuming it, and here you, you produce your life. I hope that you enjoyed uh, hearing what Susan had to say about uh, food foraging as much as I did. Uh, I'll definitely be hitting her up for more specifics, uh, especially recipes like her Irish whiskey venison stew in the future. Uh, but my goal for this week is to try and get a goose for Thanksgiving dinner. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Thanks.